What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 8, How It's Gotta Be. So, yeah, not watching this episode the night it aired was probably a huge mistake for me, because of course there are going to be things that happen that people are going to talk about, and of course I was going to end up getting spoiled on it. Um, I didn't know exactly what happened, but I went on Facebook and was just, you know, because I go on Facebook for stuff. I was avoiding anything. If I saw Walking Dead pop up at all, I'm just like skipping it. But I did see way too many pictures of Chandler Riggs for it to be a coincidence. And um, I even saw like a couple things saying Fire Scott Gimple. I just, I saw those words and I saw a picture of Chandler Riggs. I'm like, okay, what is going on? Like, clearly people are upset about this. What is happening? And I have to say, I kind of understand. And the fact that I, I feel like the storytelling in this aspect has really let down what exactly is going on with these characters. And so, I do want to start off talking about that before I talk about the rest of the episode. Because, I mean, obviously this is the biggest thing to talk about in the episode, is at the end, it's revealed that Carl's been bitten by a walker. Obviously, he's not dead yet, but, I mean, we haven't found a cure yet. So, unless they somehow make up some mystery cure, which, at this point, would kind of be like a slap in the face to pretty much everybody who's been watching the show up until now. Um, I mean, it, Carl pretty much is done. Now, they could still have, like, one redeeming scene after we come back for the second half of the season. It might make up for it. Um, but, I mean, let's just talk about what has Carl's story been this season? He's only been in it for, like, a couple episodes. What's it been? It's been about how Carl's trying to change what Rick is doing. He's trying to come up with a better way to do it. And even possibly to the point where, you know, that one episode where we see he met this guy, it seemed like he was talking to him like, hey, yeah, we're going to be the ones to take over the new world. You know, we need to be the ones that help our parents see the mistakes of their ways. Now, that being said, they could do this whole thing where Rick, after losing Carl, will now be like, well, maybe I need to take some of what he said and apply that to myself. But it still kind of makes me feel like, you know, um, why were you building up Carl's character so much then? Why was he in so little of this season? And the few scenes you did have, you're building him up as like a leader, and then you just kill him off. You know, like... It just, it seemed kind of bizarre. And even, like, in this episode where he's talking to Negan and he's like, kill me, that did not feel genuine to me. It felt more like he was saying that to buy time, you know, to kind of throw Negan off, like, wait, what, he wants to die? So that would give people time to get hidden in the sewers. But then it's like, no, he, he actually said that because he did want to die, because he's already been bitten and he's already on his deathbed. I'm like, wait, what? That... It just doesn't fit with Carl's character. It doesn't... It doesn't really fit with the story we've been told with him up till now. I just... I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense in th that sense. In the sense of a storytelling. So, yeah, I kind of understand why fans are pissed. I kind of feel the same way. I feel like, why did you build all this story up if you're just gonna let it go nowhere? If you're just gonna kill him off? You know, what was the point of his character then? It just... I, what what the purpose behind it is beyond me. You know, I read an article about it to see what exactly is going on. What are people saying? Um, a lot of people are saying there are a few different reasons. You know, one is to get back at Robert Kirkman because apparently there's a problem with him and AMC. Uh, another is saying that because Chandler's now over 18, they might have to pay him more because he's an adult. And so killing him off before uh, he gets to that point is like, oh, well, now we don't have to pay him more. I don't know if it's really it's probably the pay thing if I had to guess because money runs this industry so that actually makes a lot of sense to me uh, and if that's the case I mean what's the point of <laughs> what's the point of it you know you're gonna ruin good storytelling just because you don't want to have to pay some extra money to an actor that's cheap that's cheap storytelling and in my opinion if that is the d the true decision which even if they say it's not, I still feel like that probably played a, a little bit into it. Because everything that I saw up in this season, up until this point, had me believing that they were writing a story to sort of let Carl start showing Rick the way. And now you've killed him off halfway through the season. And it, he hasn't even gotten a chance really to talk to him. They had a, a few flashback scenes where he's talking to him. He's like, this is how it's got to be, you know, telling him. But it's so rushed and out of nowhere. We haven't even seen any build up to it until this episode. That tells me that there's a problem here, that they decided something different halfway through the season and decided to change it up a little bit. And now Carl's story is no longer 
how he's going to sort of start helping his dad and become a leader like his dad and show his dad a new way to do things. Now it's, oh no, we were we were always going to kill Carl and uh, now his dad is going to follow his ways now that he's gone forever and that's what we that's what we always plan to do. So yeah, frustrated about that. Um, but aside from that, let's talk about this rest the rest of the episode because the rest of it, aside from one other thing, was really good. Um, first of all, go back to Eugene just because he only had like one or two quick little scenes in this one. He switched sides again. <laughs> um, I, this one does make a little bit more sense though than the last episode did because he does say that he can't sleep with what he's doing. And I'm like, okay, well, interesting. So apparently that's why he's decided now to help uh, Father Gabriel get the doctor out of there because he thinks that maybe, okay, maybe I'm not doing the right thing and that's why I'm not sleeping. So maybe if I change up and do something different and actually help him, maybe that'll help me sleep again. So I, I do understand this one a bit better, but it's still kind of like flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop back and forth for Eugene. I just want that to stop. I want him to make a decision and stick to it instead of being so flip-floppy. Um, also, another little scene that wasn't good or bad. I still don't know where it's going. Uh, we see Aaron and Enid are out going to Oceanside. Uh, they go get a distillery truck and then drive it in. And in the middle of the night, they see somebody sneaking up on the truck. Uh, Aaron goes to deal with it and Enid following behind. And all of a sudden, you hear a noise and Enid goes around the truck and shoots and kills the old woman from Oceanside. I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> Like, huh, let's see, we need help from Oceanside, um, I know, let's kill one of their people. You want to help us? I mean, <laughs> I don't understand that decision at all. It's just, like, why? Hey, we need, we need your help. Hang on, one of your people uh, has my guy. He's no, no threat to kill him from what I could hear. It wasn't like he's like, he didn't shoot. No, he just like, hang on, we can talk about this. And he just goes around the truck, bam, I'm going to kill you so that way we can get your help. It just made no real sense at all. I, maybe it's going somewhere, but it was just that one quick scene and then done. So don't really know where that's going. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Right now it's kind of like, eh, don't really know how to feel about it. Uh, we'll talk about the kingdom next. We've got all these people are being, you know, pretty much everybody in this episode. It's like Negan hitting back because now he's free. So everybody's being rounded up and captured. Well, the kingdom is being rounded up. Uh, all the people in it. Ezekiel manages to get away and hide. And I'm kind of wondering, you know, what are they going to do with him? Are they going to have him just hide out until everything blows over? Is he actually going to stand up and do something? Well, he just decides to stand up and do something, which was good for his character because I feel like this is a good reason to have it. You know, yes, he does say, Carol, you helped save me. But I think, honestly, the thing that helped him decide was he didn't want to see anybody else die. And so he saw these people in danger and just said, you know what, I've got to do something. And so he distracts everybody, then pulls up in a school bus and gets everybody out of the kingdom and then sort of sacrifices himself and locks the gate so that way they can't go after all the people. Um, and so the last thing we see, you know, he does tell Carol to get everybody to safety and then locks the gates, and then we see Gavin telling him, you know, you're going to be dead on the fence, and everybody's going to look and see you and lose hope. Um, but as he's saying all of this, we see Morgan sneaking outside of the fence. So I'd be interested to see if Morgan manages to help him. Um, I don't really know what exactly he's doing there. I haven't seen him since that episode where he tried to kill that one guy and then fought Jesus and then walked away. At least I don't think... No, 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 we saw him helping Daryl and Tara last episode. But yeah, I don't know exactly know why he's there. But I assume he's probably going to try to help save him. But yeah, so Ezekiel is captured for now. Uh, then we talk about Hilltop, because that one was also pretty interesting to, to see. We see Maggie and all of her people are in their little convoy, and all of a sudden there's a tree down. And she's like, it's them. They got out somehow. Something went wrong. Sure enough, all these trucks drive alongside them. This big one drives in front of them. These guys get out, and out walks Simon being... Uh, Trevor from G GTA 5, so always a lot of fun to see him, but just, he's back to his old, his old ways, you know, whenever he was taunting uh, Gregory all those times, that was probably one of my favorite things about Hilltop, was getting to see that, well, he's pretty much back in full force for this episode, uh, he's talking to Maggie, saying, you know, I thought I could trust Gregory, but uh, turns out he wasn't my man, now, do you think you could be the one to help me out? And so pretty much gives her an option. Either he kills Jerry, 
who they managed to capture because he was driving and then we saw his car get hit and all of a sudden he's captured. Uh, he kills Jerry and then puts her in this coffin that he's put on top of their car and then takes them all back to Hilltop and then kills her and then leads the herd to Hilltop and has everybody else killed. Or they kill one of their people and then they continue to work for them and then everybody gets along because they need their crops to survive. So of course Maggie does take option too because she knows they're in a no-win situation at the moment. Uh, he kills some guy in her back seat named Neil that we met in this episode. <laughs> oh no, not Neil. Um, but yeah, so obviously she's pretty pissed off. I don't know if they gave Jerry back as well or if they still got him captured. Uh, she does say that she wants the, the coffin to bury Neil. Uh, but ultimately she goes back, takes out one of the prisoners, and then shoots and kills him. And I'm just like, holy crap. What? And then we see at the end, she writes on, she puts that guy in the coffin, writes on there, we have 38 more, this isn't the last one. And I'm just like, okay, now I get it. So she's going to pretty much say, hey, we've got prisoners, and probably try to make a bargain for them, or just sort of hold them hostage, something like that. I, I don't exactly know what she's hoping to gain out of it, because if I had to guess, Negan probably is going to just be like, so... They've got hostages. Who cares? It's not like we need them. We still got numbers. Um, so I don't see Negan playing along with the whole hostage negotiation thing. But I do find it interesting that Maggie is now starting to realize that sometimes it's got to be more than just, oh, we always need peace. And that's where I'm thinking some of these characters are going to start realizing it's got to be a compromise. You, know, you can't go Tara and Daryl's route and try to just kill everybody because then it doesn't work out like we saw you. You, know, you don't go with the plan, you try to kill a bunch of innocent people, and now you're causing problems. Uh, you also can't go Jesus' route because, I mean, you don't try to kill anybody. You look at King Ezekiel. They didn't try to kill anybody, they tried to just stay out of the fighting, and the fight eventually came to them. They lost a couple people because of it. So it's got to be sort of a compromise where you're willing to do what it takes to sort of keep the people that are evil at bay and keep these people safe that you're trying to protect but also be kind enough to where you're able to work with other people and sort of help them out as well because you're not always just going to be fighting with every single person you come along it's got to be a bit of a balance and so she's starting to realize that there's got to be a balance and um this is just the beginning of it i'm sure you know showing their hand and showing that they've got the ability to fight back as well um so, yeah, I find it very interesting. I'll be interested to see where her story is going after this. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else with Maggie. I think that was it for Hilltop. Uh, as far as Rick is concerned, all we see for him is he brings all of the, the junkyard people and then gets shot at from the sanctuary because, you know, they're still alive in there. Um, and then all the junkyard people just run away in fear. Why were they in the show? <laughs> oh, this is just still the biggest question mark for me is why were they here? We spent two episodes trying to get them to help and then they come to help and then all of a sudden they're gone. <laughs> just, eh. So yeah, I don't know. It's just, They're stupid. They're probably the worst part about the show out of all the seasons. Worse than Lori, worse than Andrea, worse than um, Shane. I, the junkyard people. They're just the bottom of the barrel for The Walking Dead. They need to be off the show now. They're even worse than Oceanside, and Oceanside's pretty stupid too. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, so we see Rick is then, you know, he gets saved by Carol and Jerry in a van. They all manage to find different cars, and like I said, Jerry gets hit, gets captured by Simon's group. Carol goes to the kingdom to help out the very last second, and then Rick goes back to Alexandra as, you know, of course, is being blown to bits. He goes to his house to find Carl and Judith, and then gets attacked by Negan. There's a fight going on. Very good fight, in my opinion. You know, it was done in the dark, and it's always easier to do a fight scene in the dark because it's harder to tell what's going on. But I thought it was very well done for one of those typical in the dark fight scenes. On top of that, a couple really good moments. You know, you got the <laughs> Rick getting knocked around, and he's like dodging the bat. It's like, do you ever shut up? Nope. <laughs> and swings at him. So you know, just a couple moments like that. Um, there's some good fight back moments as well from Rick. We see at some point he gets Lucille, and then he's like, don't you touch her, and then fights back harder, and then eventually knocks Rick out of the window, and then Rick manages to get away for the moment. Um, and then Rick comes upon Michonne, who's attacking the guy, because she came back in with Daryl and them, 
and then that's when they head down to the sewer and find Carl down there. Uh, as far as all of that stuff, though, everything else with Alexandria, like I said, the whole plan was set up where Carl was trying to talk to Negan to sort of buy time for everybody else to get out. We see Michonne, Daryl, Tara, and Rosita all drive trucks out of the back where Dwight and, um, what's her name? The, the girl that's one of Negan's right-hand people. Um, they're wait or no, maybe it's not her. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know who she is and I don't care. But they're waiting at the back door, um, waiting for them to try to come out the back. And she's like, maybe we should like actually barricade the wall. And Dwight's like, nah, it's okay. And then they drive through the back wall and knock the cars out of the way. And so you can kind of tell that Dwight sort of set that up to let them have a way out the back. Um, and then eventually they're led into this little smoke thing. And Dwight, of course, sees it and knows what's going on. And the girl's like, you yeah. What are you doing? This is a trap. What You need to stop. And he just keeps driving and then drives them right into the ambush where Daryl, Tara, Michonne, and Rosita are waiting with guns. And so they manage to take out all the people except for a few. That's when Dwight then turns and takes them all out. And then the girl comes to take Dwight out, only gets them in the shoulder before um, he manages to knock her away and then she manages to escape. Uh, and then, of course, it's kind of a question of, are Daryl and Tara going to try to kill him? And I'm like, of course not. Because... It would be stupid to kill him right now. He's unarmed. He does know about Negan's operation. He'll be able to help. But obviously, they're both just kind of like, we don't trust you, walking away, all pissed at him. And Rosita's like, the other one's like, okay, let me help you. So, um, but yeah, we see from Carl's side, though, he does manage to talk to Negan a little bit and sort of convince him to stand down for a moment. I did find that one moment very interesting, though, where he's talking to him and he's like, is this how you want it to be? Is this how you imagined it would all be? And Negan actually gets kind of quiet, like he actually did sort of get through to him for a minute. I find that very interesting. I don't know. It didn't seem like an act to me. It didn't seem like he was putting that on to make Carl think, oh, yeah, you totally got me. No, it seemed like he actually did sort of think for a minute, yeah, I didn't want to be this way at first. So I still feel like there's a bit more about Negan we don't know yet, aside from what we learned from uh, his conversation with Father Gabriel. So yeah, that was a, it was kind of a little moment thrown in there that kind of went under the radar, but I'm wondering if it's going to come back up later. Um, but yeah, that was about it for all of that scene. You know, we see a lot of this episode, Carl's just sort of staggering around trying to find a way out and just keeps getting blown everywhere by all these explosions and then finally manages to get down to the sewer. Um... And then that's where, of course, we see the bite. And so I feel like, I don't know, it, it seems like a lot of the controversy is caused by the fact that he has been, in fact, fired from the show. Um, his, I know his dad came out on Twitter and got pretty pissed off and got all frustrated and stuff. And so that's part of the controversy. So it does feel like he is off the show, um, whether that means he's going to be a part of the next episode or if they're just going to be burying his body at the beginning of next episode. I don't know. But I, I am pretty pissed off that they decided to just sort of cut his story short um, for whatever reason. It just it doesn't fit with the story they were telling us for most of this season. It doesn't work with all of that. So yeah, I'm, I am pretty upset that they did something like that. And who knows, maybe they've got an idea in place. But for right now, I am with a lot of people. I'm not saying fire Scott Gimple or anything like that. But I am saying that they need to get themselves back in the line. Because there have been a couple story elements that didn't really work this season, um, that I think is kind of a, a a product of how they're telling the story right now. So, yeah, but that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this last episode? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss, all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for your Walking Dead reviews. I'll see you guys in the next half of the season. Peace out.